What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another FNAF Game Theory Reaction. Yes, today we are going to be reacting to the latest FNAF Game Theory called Game Theory Was FNAF's Final Mystery? Really that simple. And I already know exactly what this is going to be about. This is going to be about the crying child's name. Uh, we did a reaction video, um, I say recently, I think it was actually like over a month ago now, um, to Hyperdroid's video on the crying child's name and we came to the conclusion that his name is Dave and I completely agreed with the theory. Um, I think I, I also had a few things to add to it and a few things I was like, eh, it's a, it's a little bit like, um, the, the evidence isn't fully there. But like, I, I think the crying child's name being Dave fits. I remember getting loads of comments saying like, uh, Dave sounds like a 40 year old man's name. Well, that makes sense because 40 years ago was 19... 80 <laughs> it, or the 1980s sorry um so like i think the theory works and i believe this is what tom is going to be talking about today so i am so ready to get in and see what he has to add please remember if you enjoy this reaction to like and subscribe for more in the future and let's just get into it after nine years and countless theories, the crying child's name has been found. That's right, on screen right now is the real name of Snap. Dave. Dave is... Oh, there's two Daves. Wait, one, two... I... Okay, so what did I think before? I thought it was... I think Evan was the closest that we had, right? I think Evan was the closest we had, um, but it was flawed because the fourth step to the the way that you got Evan uh, was a bit messed up. But uh, I think Dave really works because of the whole like mirror thing. Uh, I also see Garrett here, Garrett. Um, but I think the rest of these are kind of throwaway names. I'm, I'm gonna see a Chris here somewhere because people thought his name was Chris for so long. Chris Afton, Gregory is here as well and Henry and Jeremiah. It's probably Jeremy. Let's be, uh, let's be honest. Half four's crying child. And by the end of this episode, you're going to know exactly which one it is. Well, Hello, I internet. already know. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's just desperately trying to keep up with the FNAF content train. It feels like there's been a lot, right? We had all that stuff from the 10th anniversary. We've had our first full entry into the Choose Your Own Adventure style book series. There's even a FNAF level in the new Funko Fusion game. I swear, if there is lore in this thing, I am going <laughs> to scream. But while I was busy just trying to keep on top of all of that, someone else decided that it would be fun to add one final slice to my already oversized Hyper -droid. mountain of lore pizza. Fellow theorist and friend of the channel, Hyperdroid. Now, Yay. normally another theorist posting a theory of their own doesn't particularly slow me down. I'd normally finish writing what I'm doing and then I'd go back and watch that later. But this one was different because he claimed he'd done the impossible. He claimed that after years of speculation, he'd finally found the name of the crying child. Yeah. <gasps> That is a massive claim, especially when <laughs> so many others had tried and failed in the past. But it wasn't all talk. He backed it up with some pretty solid evidence that the fan base seemed to love. We were inundated with messages on our subreddit, Twitter, YouTube comments, all asking us one thing. Is he right? And I get it. Hyperdroid yeah. is a fantastic theorist, but this particular puzzle has eluded us for so long, to the point where most of us just thought it would never be solved. If he is right, and we're all going to start calling the crying child something other than the crying child. We want to make sure it stands up to scrutiny. That's true. And I, I think the other thing is like a lot of people are really just denying it because they're like, why do we need a name for the crying child? It's like, let's just call him the crying child. And like, while I get that, it is a mystery that's been put in place. And um, I think... With things like his name being Dave, I think it um, it helps to expand on the lore of the characters and the world. Um, because, you know, like in, in the books, Dave um, was the was the name that William Afton used um, in his like night guard role or, or whatever it was. Uh, I, I can't really remember the Silver Rice trilogy that well. Um, but like, I, I feel like the name does matter and it's it's quite it's just quite nice to know the name for certain right we have elizabeth afton we have michael afton william afton 
and then we have Crying Child. Like it, it doesn't make sense that we we have three out of the four. So I I really do believe that we should be able to find the Crying Child's name somewhere. And I think that Hyperdroid is absolutely right, as I've been saying. Let's see where he goes with this. Don't want to be caught backing the wrong animatronic horse. So let's go through the evidence he's presented, the methods he's used, and see whether this new name holds water. Ladies and gentlemen, it's um. Huh. Can't use Morty anymore, can we? And doesn't look Morty. like Matt's going to be interrupting me this time. <laughs> hmm, Got to come up with something oh, new. Oh no. Oh, I know. Leave your theories in the comments below. <laughs> I'll pick my favorite in the next episode of Trash. Yeah, that's about trash. right. Yeah, that's what happens when I let Yosef oh pick the acronym. God. Let's give a trash take then, shall we? To understand how Hyperdroid came to find this new name, we first need to recap where the mystery started. The survival. I love that animation. After the release cool. of FNAF 6, we got this book that seemed to just be a kid's puzzle book, but it turned out to be one of the biggest lore clues I in love the entire the book. series. And I really do mean that. Inside, we have three characters talking to us. Mike Afton, writing in red pen, a ghostly spirit writing in faded text, and a final spirit altering the physical text of the book. Across several pages, the faded text wrote the words, my name. And on one page, my name was written on a gravestone. This reflected the fifth gravestone with no name that we found at the end of FNAF 6. Thanks to Reddit user dpowerful1, we've realized that you could take the altered numbers on the pages where the words my name were found and use those as coordinates for the word search, giving us the name Cassidy, Cassidy the fifth yeah. missing child. This in and of itself was a huge huge dub for the FNAF community, but it was kind of bittersweet <laughs> because there was another puzzle in this book that remained unsolved. The Foxy, Foxy grid. grid. Ah! This grid had faded letters in the first we two hate boxes, it. showing us that we needed to fill in the rest and likely meaning we needed more coordinates to figure out a new name. The name of the spirit writing in altered text in the book. Based yeah. on Cassidy's questions about the purple plastic telephone, psychic friend Fredbear, as well as a birthday party that was for you, all things seem to be pointing to this final spirit being being FNAF 4's crying Absolutely, child, the Foxy yeah. Grid was going to finally help us figure out the name of this character. The and like was... when you have when you have three characters in a logbook, you have Mike's name automatically because we know who Michael Afton is, and we know that the red pen is Mike. Cool, we we have a name for Mike. Then you have all of the faded text, and then the faded text leads you to it's me, and it's me being intertwined with that. Um, that grid that we solved, the word search, um, or, yeah, word search, and then you get Cassidy. Uh, so cool, we have the name Mike and we have the name Cassidy, but there's one more spirit in the book, the crying child. But it wouldn't make sense for us to use this whole book to just get half of the solution, to just get Cassidy, because we didn't know Cassidy's name before, we didn't know crying child's name before. So like, why would he make this book to just give us Cassidy's. It doesn't really make all that much sense. So I, I really, really strongly believe, like really strongly believe that Cassidy and the crying child's names are both in this book. Uh, I just don't see like from a creation standpoint, like why, why would you only give one name or like why would, I, I don't know. It's just like, it, it makes, logical sense to me. Nobody could solve it. Matt was literally ripping his hair out for years over this thing. Some people tried to find the name in other places and then reverse engineer a solution. In Help Wanted, the FNAF 4 bedroom was called Norman Bedroom. So maybe Norman? Yes. Some people thought yeah. Garrett because that's Mike's brother in the recent movie. Some yeah. even thought it might be Gregory because he's designed in a similar way to the crying child. But none of them were able to link it back to the Foxy Grid and so it just felt inconclusive. A few Reddit users found the phrase is Springtrap using six Cassidy coordinates and six my name Really? Numbers. This seemed to pair nicely with my name because it matched the FNAF 3 teaser. My name is, is Springtrap. Springtrap. And implied, therefore, that the huh. ghostly text was actually Afton speaking I've to never the heard that child, one before. whose name would therefore be Cassidy. But sadly, this solution ignores the seventh coordinate needed to make up the name Cassidy <laughs> in the first place. And so by cherry picking six of the coordinates, it kind of causes the whole yeah. thing to fall apart. Finally, the most simple and well-known of pick. the theories was offered by Reddit user Wolfie17 I remember this one. Kingdom. 
they match the questions that Cassidy was asking to the answers given by the crying child in all yeah. text. The party was for you. It was for me. What do you see? I can't see. Does he still talk to you? I can hear I remember Matt Pat made a this video on this as well. the letters E, V, and A. But they weren't really able to figure out the final letter. Another Reddit user, Godzilla813105, did manage to find a solution. They yeah. added up the tally marks to give them the final coordinates 39, leading to the letter N and the name Evan. A lot of people really liked this name and thought it was an interesting theory. It was theory, the best thing we had so far. Because you had to break the method on that final letter, it was just too tough a moon drop to swallow. Enter Hyperdroid. He too liked the initial method posed by Wolfie, but he agreed that the final letter would need to follow the same method, especially as Crying Child does offer a fourth answer. I'm scared. So he took the same three answers to get the letters E, V, and A, but rather than skipping the fourth answer, he tried to match it to another one of the questions. On page 41, Cassidy asks, do you have dreams? Initially, that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense given the response, but underneath that question, Mike has drawn a picture of Nightmare. The Nightmare animatronics came yeah. from William's experiments on his kids, and it's been theorized that this is what was used to make the crying child scared of the animatronics in FNAF 4. That means the crying child that makes would a lot of sense. know what this is, but I'm would scared, also be yeah. afraid of it, leading to him giving the seemingly non-direct answer, I'm scared. Taking the page number for that question, you can plug it into the Foxy Grid and get the letter D. I will admit, like that, uh, that is still a problem. Absolutely, uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna. Um, I'm not gonna sugarcoat all of this. Um, there are still problems that we kind of need to dial in on a little bit more. Like, why is the answer to that question this answer, and why is the answer to this question that answer? Like, it doesn't fully work, but it's still like it's a consistent method for all four letters. And at the end of the day, you reflect it and, and you get the name Dave. But like, yeah, there, there, there are always going to be problems uh, with this, I think. Um, it's, it might just be the way that the puzzle is set up. It's just, it's quite difficult. But I, I think that Dave works really well still. Um, again, it's, it is our best guess, right? It, it's our best guess for the crying child's name. So it's, it's probably... Like, I, I don't see anybody else with a better answer than this. I think it's it's just the best guess in the community. Spelling, Evad. Then, noticing all the references the book had to reflecting, along with the random mirror next to the word search that's never been used for anything. Yes, and sorry to keep pausing. Um, also, we have things like Isoptrophobia, uh, which is the name of the title screen song in Ultimate Custom Night, and Isoptrophobia, or however you say it, is the fear of mirrors. Um, and then you have like Michael Afton looking in the mirror uh, at the end of Sister Location. There's a lot of mirror imagery and like reflections and stuff like that in not only the survival logbook, but actually the wider FNAF um, franchise. And so I think that this is absolutely correct to do. I think especially when it says reflect on this, reflect on this. Here's a big mirror that is opposite the other page where we got Cassidy. So it's like I, I really think they are... Um, saying to you like you have to flip the word uh which is a really really cool puzzle by the way really love it anything hyperdroid reflected the answer giving them the crying child's name d a v e dave <laughs> Everybody He's going to talk about David, I think, from the mimic. This. But Hyperdroid wasn't done. Not only did he offer the initial solution, he also went classic game theory on all of us and used some real world <laughs> He calls out that Dave, or more accurately, the full name David, was the third to fifth most popular baby name for boys between 1970 and 1980, yeah. around the time that he would have been born. I love the fact he did this. Real world evidence is so useful for theory crafting. It can give you insight into things that the games or books might otherwise not. And given how important this name is, I wouldn't be surprised if Scott had actually done some real world research himself into the name. Oh, yeah. And what's more, I think we can actually expand upon Hyperdroid's idea here by getting a little more specific. So let's give it a go. FNAF is commonly depicted as taking place in Hurricane Utah. According to the United States Social Security Administration, between 1970 and 1980, David switched positions a few times, occupying either the fourth, the third, the second, or the first most popular 
popular spots, higher than what Hyperdroid presented. So we're off to a pretty good start. Although there is one detail about the Aftons that we never really talk about that could change all of this. Ludwig actually mentioned it when he binged all of the family <laughs> with Matt on the screen. I remember Matt, that. Why are they British? Why are they British? The kids that are raised in like Utah big... and they sound British. When the Aftons speak, they sound British. Likely somewhere from England based on the accents. Yeah. I'd like to say it's nice to have some British representation in video games, but I'm not really sure this is the one I'd want. <laughs> and what I will say, and I think this is something that he is going to um, bring up, is I be at least I believe William, Elizabeth, Dave, maybe Michael. I feel like Michael might be more on the American side of things, but I at least those three names, William, Elizabeth, Dave, huge British names. Like, um, genuinely, like, really, really popular in the UK, I think. Um, and not only that, like, you have Elizabeth and William, which are royal names, too. Um, I remember something that, that was at the end of Bobby Dots Part 2, where it was like, the Bobby Dots were then given the names of monarchs, which, which was really weird. But, um... But yeah, they're, they're, they're all British names, I think. So that is a good thing to point out. Whereas Henry, I don't think, is as British. Or at least I don't, I don't see many Henrys around in the UK. I could be completely wrong about that. Let's just hear what Tom has to say. Tom's more British than me, technically. <laughs> anyway, this detail could throw a spanner into the works, as there's a chance that William named his kids based on what was popular back home rather than where they lived now. So, was David still a popular name in the UK? Thankfully, the answer is abso-freaking-lutely. More Very so than popular. in America, actually. According to the Office of National Statistics, David was the most popular name for boys in England from 1954 to 1974. After that, between 1974 and 1994, it only dropped down to number three. So still, this is looking yeah. like a pretty solid piece of evidence right now. Plus, I know a good, like, <laughs> I want to say, like, 10 people named Dave, by the way. Like, I, I know a lot of people named Dave. My great uncle is called Dave. Um, like, uh, there's there's a lot of people named David. <laughs> Obviously, it's, like, third ranked um, between just that era alone. Um, but I, I think that it's it's really possible that Dave was the name that was chosen, um, especially if Scott Cawthon was looking at, like, the 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 real-world stuff, like, the, the culture and um, different countries and, like, the British. Yeah, I, yeah, I you know what I mean. Um, I, I just think that it's it's quite... It's, it's really... Um, it's really possible. <laughs> I was trying to think of a better word, but there you go. We can actually take it a step further. <laughs> Wanna guess what other name was in the top 10 baby boy names during the 70s? Michael. In the UK, Michael was the ninth most popular name for a oh, boy. Okay. And in Utah, it was literally the number one name every year in the 70s, except 1973, where it was overtaken by there you Jason. Go. <sighs> of course, Jason had to ruin the perfect streak. <laughs> Hashtag blame Jason, am I right? Regardless, again, this seems to be lining up pretty well. As what I say, Hey, Michael's more popular in child. the US, I think. Well she is also on these lists, although she's nowhere near as popular. In the UK for that time, she was sitting between 20th and 25th between most Elizabeth's. popular name. And in Utah, it's similar. Anywhere between 19th to 24th. That's not really as high as I'd like for it to feel like a solid connection. It isn't super bad. It would be way worse if the names were like 50th or 100th most popular, you know? But Well, yeah, if, if you take into consideration like the name Cassidy, I think Cassidy is quite low down. I I, uh, I actually do know someone named Cassidy here, um, but I don't think it's as an as popular name. Again, I don't I don't hear it too often, uh, but I know that it's it's an American, it, it's more of an American thing. Um, yeah. This is being used as evidence for how Scott picked his names, and Elizabeth would likely need to follow that same pattern. And in reality, she'd have then ended up being called something like Sarah or Jennifer, both number one names for the time period in the UK and Utah, respectively. Therefore, while David yeah. was a really popular name between the 1970s and 80s, it kind of feels like a weaker connection. Maybe Scott just thought Elizabeth sounded more British because that was the queen at the time. Who knows? No need to worry, though, because that wasn't the only real-world evidence Hyperdroid used. He also mentioned the meaning of the name 
David. While it was a popular name in both the UK and the US, it's actually of Hebrew origin, meaning beloved. Fun fact, Thomas also comes from a Hebrew word that means twin. I'm not a twin, at least as oh. far as I know. Maybe you could let me know down in the comments if you think you found my long lost twin. For this theory though, Hyperdroid claims that the- Don't you guys say it. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> meaning does make sense. He connects the meaning of beloved to the crying child's brother, Mike, and how his whole character arc is caused by killing his brother, showing us that his brother, Dave, was beloved by him. This is where I have to press X to doubt. Yeah, but I don't, yes, I don't like Michael it. Michael does say sorry to his brother by the end of FNAF 4. The rest of his actions don't really say that he considered his brother beloved. He jump scares him, he actively puts him into an animatronic. He doesn't seem to care about him at all. Oh, I think, Again, sorry to keep pausing, but I think that, uh, well, first of all, like this is a reaction video. If you want to go and watch the original video, you can. Um, this is more of a discussion video, actually, than, than a reaction, I would say. Um, but I think that the name, or not the name, um, I, I think that that is very circumstantial evidence, almost. I, I, I also, th I, I think that, did Scott look into the meaning of names um, before he made them like I, I don't think that was a thing that Scott was really considering when choosing his names. Um, I think it's a hard one. It's a hard one to think about, right? Because I think one that I've looked at previously was the name Cassidy, and Cassidy um, very openly means curly hair, and in the Fazbear Frights books. Andrew has curly hair and, and he's very clearly told to have curly hair. So there was like a connection there. Um, but like, did did Scott think about that? Did Scott do the research for that? We don't really know. Um, so it's, it's kind of hard to gather whether this is good evidence or not. But like even even knowing that the, the meaning of the name Dave is beloved, like you're, you're sort of you're sort of having to to make that connect like you you're you've got tunnel vision at that point you're like looking for beloved so like what why don't i look up um people's names um that that mean like bitten or something <laughs> I, I don't know i'm just trying to come up with like an example like if if i looked up uh names uh, popular names uh between this time or whatever that mean this certain thing and it's like a better connection than just beloved like what what makes me pick the beloved one over those names do you, i i, I kind of hope that i've explained that in an okay way but um i don't think that beloved is a great connection um but it doesn't it doesn't make me think it's dave any less uh yeah after that, his actions seemed to be spurred on more by his father. Afton sent him down into sister location where he then learned about Elizabeth and the monster his father was, and so went on a quest to destroy him. Some of that may have come from the guilt of killing his brother, but I'm just not convinced enough to say that Michael considered his brother beloved. Now, that doesn't mean that I think the meaning David being beloved is invalid evidence at all. He may not have been beloved by Michael, but he was beloved by someone else. That is William, true. William, William Afton didn't want his little boy gone. He did didn't want him to die. He needed to I will to put you back together. Him. I will put you back together. We've also believed for a long Maybe while I am that Tom's he twin. killed Charlie in a drunken or emotional rage after the death of his own son. That wouldn't happen if he didn't care about his kid, if his son wasn't beloved. And by associating that meaning with Afton, other pieces fall into place for the other Afton kids as well. Michael once again comes from the Hebrew language and it means who is like God. Typically this is meant as a rhetorical question because there is no one like God, but it could also be interpreted as a statement. Michael, who is like God. William is a man who has figured out power over life and death in this world. He sees himself as a god. And Wasn't Michael, um, it, like, if we're talking about religion here, I think Michael was an archangel in Christianity. Um, I remember way back, like, I'm talking like seven, eight years ago, I made a theory um, about FNAF's connection to Christianity, because of course Scott is a religious person um so uh, there could have been that sort of connection because i know like angel gabriel as well is is a big one uh and then we have michael and then what there was another one i think um 
not for its... Was it Jeremy? Um, no, I can't remember. But I, I made connections between, like, all of the missing children and the angels uh, in in the Bible. Um, but I, <laughs> it was a really, really bad theory, by the way. Um, but I, I think that there are connections with Michael's name. Yeah, absolutely. I think there could be, at least... Um, so, I don't know, you might be on something. Mike tells us himself that the Funtime animatronics confuse him for his father. They didn't recognise me at first, but then they thought I was you. He is like his and father. I did it. He is I put who them is back like together. God. The same thing goes for the name Elizabeth. It's derived from the Hebrew name Elisheva and means my God is a promise. One of the only lines we get from Elizabeth before she becomes baby is her begging William to let her play with baby. Oh. Daddy, let me go to her. Didn't you make her just for me? Baby was made by Afton uh, for Elizabeth. She's annoyed because she is now being denied. I don't know if this was Scott's intention for though. her. The thing that was promised to her by her father, by the god of this world. After that, she disobeyed and got scooped. And so Afton made her another promise. The same one he made the crying child. He sent Michael down into the bunker to put her back together. Three Afton kids, three Hebrew names, three meanings that all point back to the Hebrew thing dear is convincing. Old dad. It's like poetry. It's like poetry, it's sort of they rhyme. Interestingly, William isn't of Hebrew Oh, come origin. on. You could have used the uh it's like a uh, what was it? Uh in the FNAF movie. I swear he says something about poetry and then it's like parallelism um because you know it's like like father like son. not not like father like son. Um didn't you say, I don't know, I can't really remember. I can't remember the FNAF movie. It came out like almost a year ago now. Isn't that wild? And it's actually Germanic, but it also has an interesting meaning. Resolute protector or strong-willed warrior. He tried to protect Elizabeth. He was resolute in fixing and protecting the crying child after he died. And if you don't call surviving a spring-locking strong-willed, I don't know what else you'd call it. So from a thematic yeah. standpoint, the name Dave does seem to work. Its meaning fits what we know of the character and it ties into the same themes as the rest of the Afton family. It's at this point though I should probably address the Orville in the room. Real world research is great and strong connecting themes are fantastic pieces of supplementary evidence. But that's the point, they're supplementary. Yeah. If the core evidence isn't there to back that's it up in the first at. place, then it don't mean squat. It all comes down to the actual method that Hyperdroid used to solve this puzzle. And I'll be honest, yeah. when I first saw it, I was a little unsure. Using the faded text of the party was for you and what do you see make complete sense for the answers it was for me and I can't see. I can hear sounds technically works with does he still talk to you? Oh, it's not the cleanest. But I'm scared being a response to do you have dreams does feel like a bit of a stretch. The line only works because of the nightmare drawing on the same page. Yeah. Even though none of the other questions need context clues from the page. This feeling was also exacerbated when Hyperdroid pointed back to a Reddit post by the user Ecstatic Marzipan 7 from the GT subreddit. They came up with a solution three years years ago, so way to represent the GT community. But when I took a look at the original post, they were receiving similar pushback. People were commenting the same things that I'm saying now. However, we theorists are nothing if not thorough. We always dot our I's and cross our T's. Rather than just okay. say this answer feels wrong and throwing the whole thing out, I wanted to go back through the logbook and do a bit of my own reverse engineering. That's I the best thing you can do. I every page number where Cassidy wrote something in the logbook. I then used those page numbers in in the Foxy Grid to find all the possible letters we could get to see if any of them gave us usable answers that we could then go back and pair with I'm scared. Two of them got ruled out immediately. What do you remember and do you miss them? Because they're on pages 20 and 70. You can't go zero down on a grid, so they're out. On page 56 we get True. what's your favourite ride? The carousel, but that spells Vave, so that's out too. Three of Cassidy's questions do give us letters that technically work. Do you remember your name is on page Page 31. Where is this going? Do any of these toys look familiar to you is on page 42. And did one of these belong to you is on page 43. 31 gives us a 
a C, 42 gives us a W, and 43 gives us a P. Using these cave, letters, wave, you can spell and cave, wave, and P. <laughs> real words, but not exactly names, especially considering the very normal Mike and Elizabeth. Although, page 43 isn't actually labeled as 43. It's one of the altered page numbers, and it shows 15. So I tried that too, and it gave me Yave, another dud. The only time I got close to another answer was by using page 23, which ironically gives you an N spelling Evan. Was Wolfie actually right oh, all those years no. ago? Yeah, no. If you thought Do You Have Dreams made no sense with I'm Scared, I feel like Was Your Favorite Childhood Toy a Plus <laughs> Telephone is an even worse yeah. answer. It would then mean we haven't reversed anything either, and so the mirror in the middle of the- Oh, hello there. Um, <laughs> so basically what just happened is my computer just completely decided it wanted to freeze and then shut itself down. So I'm back <laughs> and we're gonna watch the rest of the video. Okay, let's go reversed anything either, and so the mirror in the middle of the book would also remain unused, which isn't really ideal. The last page to try was 83, where Cassidy asks, is this song familiar to you? This gives you a T in the Foxy Grid, and I tried using this as both an alternative for I'm scared as well as I can hear sounds, just to be sure that no combination of those letters made a name either, which means by process of elimination, do you have dreams does kind of have to be the answer. If it's not, we also have to throw out the letters E, V, and A2 it works because the best. we need to find an entirely new method to solve this grid. And That's at this true. point, I kind of feel like if there was another method, someone surely would have found it by now. I'm sure that some people still aren't going to be happy with this solution. Yeah. For all the other questions, Crying Child was just responding to the words Cassidy said. But for this final one, you have to use Mike's drawing to get the full interpretation. As I've already said, that kind of breaks the method. Not as much as finding the end for Evan using the tally marks did, but enough that it doesn't feel sad satisfying. Except when you stop and look back, Scott actually did the same thing with the Cassidy puzzle. Think about it. At the start, we were using altered page numbers from pages with my name written on them. But as the puzzle went on, that changed. Suddenly, we stopped using altered page numbers and began using other altered numbers from the page, like 7 and 2 or 10 and 11. That's kind of true. Pages, we're not even it's using a bit of a flawed altered puzzle. Numbers. One of them, we use numbers written by Mike, a completely different character. And on another, you have to follow Mike's clue to a different page and then use the numbers that are just in the book. They're not altered, they're not written down, they're just there. We were still following the my name part of the puzzle, but the actual number used for the coordinates was different. That rule was being broken. Yeah. And yet, no one really <laughs> batted an eyelid when that was pitched out. Why? Because we got an answer that made sense. Yes, the method was a little messy, but clearly it was the correct solution that Scott had planned, given he then went on to confirm that yeah, FNAF movie's great. Is cancelled yeah. movie ideas. To me, this is the same situation. We finally have an answer that spells a name and follows the same kind of puzzles, even if the method is a little messy. Maybe Scott wanted to make the puzzles harder as they went on, or, you know, maybe he just isn't that good at planning puzzles to begin with. We theorists are this was a while ago complex as well. ciphers and ARGs that sometimes I think we expect everything we solve to be on that level, but in actuality, not everyone is. And so yeah. the simplest solutions can actually be the best. All that being said, what do I actually think? Is Dave the real name of the crying child? Well, even though a little messy, the solution does fit. It gives an answer for the random mirror. To me, it's really book, satisfying. And it works thematically with all of the Afton children and their parts in the story. Yeah. Is crying child's name Dave? For me, after spending days going back and forth, back and forth, looking at every side of the argument, I'm I convinced. have to say that the answer is a resounding yes. I believe that Dave is the name of the crying child. So to Hyperdroid, Ecstatic Marzipan 7, and any other FNAF theorist that came up with this solution over the years, congratulations. You did it. You solved the Foxy Grid, and you got the theorist seal of approval. Editor, cue <laughs> the applause. <laughs> Nice. So nice to give one of these out, especially to people like Ecstatic Marzipan7, who solved this thing over three years yeah, ago. Yeah, GG. It's a helpful reminder that there are some fantastic theorists out there. We just need to be open to hearing them out. Whether they're a tiny yes! channel here on YouTube, a small post on a subreddit with only two upvotes, or a random reply on a Discord server, they can have ideas that are just as good as any one of us bigger Exactly. It may go against our own personal headcanons, but if this experience has taught us anything, it's not to discount those ideas 
ideas just because they're a little out there. Give them a chance. Who knows? Well they said. might actually have the solutions we've all been looking for. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory! Thanks for watching. And if you're looking for more FNAF theory reviews, just bite of 83 the video on screen to watch our reaction to okay. your process. Okay, man. I really like this. I think this is a great video all round, pretty much. Um, I mean, the real world evidence still a little bit flawed, I think, but he did bring that up. Um, I think that that message at the end was actually really well worded. Um, and it was a really fitting place to put that because I think the um, ecstatic marzipan or whatever your name is, sorry, you, you have the seal, the theory of a, the approval, whatever. <laughs> Seal of theory approval or whatever it is. Um, I really think it's really sweet that we did actually go back and realize that there there were people who solved it way back, but nobody listened to them almost. Um, just because MatPat is a huge theorist, just because Hyperdroid is a huge theorist and Rytoast and ID, and just because I'm on the internet a little bit, <laughs> and I make theories, it doesn't mean you automatically have to believe any one of us. But the best thing you can do is you can listen to us and you can listen to the comments and you can listen to anybody on like Discord servers, as Tom said, and you can propose your own theories. Like the thing about the theorist community, which I feel like has gotten a little bit lost over time is respect. Um, I think that the best way to make progress is to just respect each other. Because if you're having respectful conversations, you can actually make progress with what you're saying and what you're trying to say and with what actually the solution to these sorts of puzzles are. Um, so I really do think that you just need to um, kind of, uh, you, you need to present your ideas as well as possible. And of course you need to fight for them, but, you also need to be respectful about it and you need to listen to people um, because this person, Marzipan, whatever, you had this three years ago and it wasn't brought up to like YouTube, basically. It, it, it didn't go from Reddit to YouTube. Um, so yeah, but anyway, really good video. I still believe the name is Dave, of course. Uh, I think this just kind of confirms it even further. And I really like that this is getting even more widespread by the game theorists. I'll give this video a like. Um, I really like that it's getting more widespread by the game theorists because it means that people are going to hear about it more and that this might actually finally be an accepted name for the crying child. Am I going to be calling the crying child Dave from now on? Ah, oh, it's really hard. It's really hard to say. The thing is about the Cassidy one is that we just didn't have a name for the fifth child, right? We didn't have a name for the fifth missing child, but then we got Cassidy. So it's not like everybody was calling Cassidy the fifth missing child all the time. And then we were like, oh, Cassidy, hmm. No, I'll just stick with fifth, fifth missing child. Like, but the, the difference is with this is that we've been calling the crying child the crying child for 10 years <laughs> and it's well like nine years but it, it, it's 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 hard to say like if it is actually Dave we, we have no way of actually knowing unless Scott confirms it himself anyway that's it for me I'm gonna stop rambling uh, I have dragged this out so much but thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Uh, and yeah, make sure you subscribe. And I will see you in another video. Goodbye.